My brother found two computers in a cupboard. Let's look at them. Before we do anything else, let's plug these in and come up to my secondary monitor here and see whether or not they even work. So, machine number one, the QDI system we'll call it, as it has no badge on the front. Let's see what happens when we push the old power button. So we're trying to log input, <laughs> not that I think it's going to help at this point. So, it would appear that one's not working. Let's try the other. Okay, machine number two. The Fox computer system. Oh. Okay. Now, my many years of IT experience will tell me that there is something wrong with this computer. It's very subtle. But if you listen carefully, you can hear the signs that there is a problem. As you can see, it's not coming up on the screen either, so... That's better than the other one. <laughs> I'll give it that. Let's turn that off. Okay, so neither of these work. Um, what we will do is get them on the bench, have a look inside and see what's going on, see whether or not we can fix them, or if we can sort of mash them into one awesome Windows 98 machine in the progress. First things first, let's open them up, see what we're dealing with inside, and see whether or not we can hazard a guess as to why it's sounding an air raid siren when you try and turn it on. Thanks, me. Welcome to the workbench. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at these two computers. I think we'll be mostly focusing on this one here, the one that powers on, uh, screams and fails to boot. And this should hopefully be the one that's slightly easier to fix. And this will become a kind of donor machine alongside the other uh, Windows 98 machine that I've got. So the aim of this series, as it will probably be, due to the fact we won't have enough time to look at everything in one video, the series will end up with a kind of mega Windows 98 machine, which will become my retro gaming machine, which will then mean that we can do some videos about old PC games and things like that coming up in the future. So without further ado, let's take a look at this first machine. Now, the one I'm gonna open up um, is the Fox Systems machine, which as we saw just moments ago, uh, lets off a siren when it comes on, meaning there must be some kind of severe fault in there. We'll open it up and have a look if there's anything that's very obvious. Um, in the meantime, the reason I'm picking this machine as you can see here, is that it's the more interesting of the two. Having what looks to be a dedicated graphics card, well, must be a dedicated graphics card, whereas the other one is using the onboard graphics and generally, sorry, I'm not focus on my camera, looks a little bit more boring. So we're definitely gonna start with this Fox Systems one and see where we go from there. Let's get our reject off the table. Ugh. and start by opening this one up. Okay, so, from what I can see in here, I don't know how well you can make that out, we have quite a few cobwebs and other creepy crawlies and things built up on here. Hopefully it's not gonna scare me too much when I open it up. We have two whole screws holding it together, which appear to be, hopefully, screws I can get into. We'll find out. 
I think a flathead should do that. They're weird, they're sort of like part star screws with a flathead across the top. Yeah, that's fine. Phew! So this machine must have been opened before in its life as there's only two screws in the back here, top two are missing. As I say, these are old screws that my brother found in a cupboard. Old screws, old computers that my brother found in a cupboard. Let's see what we're dealing with. Hopefully not a spider's nest. Okay. So, as we can see, the contents of this machine, pretty grim, definitely in need of a clean. I think, uh, let's at least get a fluffy cloth. Let's see what's, let's see if we can get rid of some of these cobwebs just so they don't go over my hands. Not that I'm scared, not that I'm scared. Okay. Fortunately, it seems to only really be dead spiders in here. Oh, sweet, this is a slot CPU. Nice. So, let's pull these parts out and see what we're actually dealing with, shall we? This graphics card doesn't look like anything I'm familiar with. Let's pull it out and see what's going on. AGP, oh no. Well, it is AGP, but I don't think it's got up. It's not got a release mechanism at the back. So we are looking at a 3D Blaster Banshee. Oh, is that the dreaded note? Not SL. Oh, this is a Creative Labs 3D card. As I say, this is not something that I'm familiar with. Let's have a little look. Model CT6750. So CT6750. Oops, I spelled that model number wrong. Wonderful. Creative 3D Blaster Banshee CT6750. Sixteen megabyte. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll do a bit of my old research on this card and drop something in, but yeah, as we can see, that's that's a pretty cool card. Nice. Always fun to discover something new in an old machine. <laughs> Obviously, all of this will need a good clean. What else do we have in here? We have a modem. And we have a sound card, so let's get the boring old modem out first. Wow, well, I've got those weird screws again. If anyone knows what those weird screws are called, let me know in the comments. I've not come across them before. They're sort of like, as I say, a star screw, but they've got a Phillips in, so they're kind of pointless. That screw can stay down there. Parallel tasking two. So this is a three com modem. Nothing too fascinating there. And finally, we have the sound card. I mean, it's got to be creative too, right? If the GPU was creative, then why wouldn't you have a creative sound card? Hey, Sound Blaster PCI 128. That is sweet. That is a good addition to the collection here and a worthy card. So what else have we got in here? Hmm, got quite a lot in here actually. Two CD-ROMs, floppy. And this CPU, this is an AMD slot CPU. Shouldn't we just, or do we, ah, I see, it comes off like that. Oi! 
Oi, there we are. Wow. Intel Pentium 2512K. Fox Computer Systems. What on earth is going on? So I think someone has attached an AMD fan, possibly cooler, to this slot CPU. So it's actually a Pentium 2, according to the sticker on the back. Um, we'll have to actually open it up to figure out what it is, which I'm just going to pop it to one side for now. We'll figure that out later. And finally, let's have a look at the RAM that's in here. So we have 128 megabytes. So again, this is from Fox Computer Systems, the manufacturer. They seem to have nice stickers that they pop on things. So I'm going to assume this was its original configuration with 128 megabytes of SD RAM. Perhaps the cooler on the slot CPU gave up the ghost at some point and they had to replace it. Uh, this is this is PC100-128, which has been mixed with PC100-322 RAM. Um, this doesn't seem to have a size written on it. Nope, not sure what size they are, but they are faster than the 128 megabyte stick that was put in there. RAM is, old RAM is something I have plenty of, so we should be able to find something not too slow that can go in my Windows 98 machine when it's finally finished. Okay, interesting motherboard here. I'm not sure what form factor that would be. Um, seems slimmer than, a, than an ATX. I'm sure any experienced IT people out there are screaming at me knowing exactly what it is. But uh, for me, this slightly predates my knowledge of computer systems. And I see we've got the old, uh, uh, whatever they're called, style slots in there as well. So CD drives and such can stay in there for now. They're not too interesting. We'll take this motherboard out and have a look. Take the front panel off. Hey, let's organise the screws. So I'm going to sort this box out, especially to do so. And where's that last screw? I see it. Okay. Should be the motherboard free. We are very interesting slot one motherboard. I think it was called slot one. The good old Pentium two. That's actually quite an interesting chip. We'll definitely take a look at that in another video. So that's the first machine opened. So I guess looking at it, we probably do have time to open the second machine and pull all the components out. Uh, that way we can make part two cleaning. Um, get all the components nice and clean and we'll do things like test the drives power supplies and things separately Pop that out of the way for now smash bash and we'll get the second one up here now so uh you can see on the back here, someone has actually labelled one of these ports. Um, so you've got keyboard, mouse, uh, all, all your standard LPT1, VGA, you've got your sound out there. You've got uh, some sort of serial card, modem, some sort of scanner card, another serial card. 
Again, this looks pretty messy, pretty dirty, but we'll um, see what's going on when we open it. Which may be easier said than done. So, as you can see on the back here, I have no, no screws, so it can't slide back as a normal machine does. Hmm. Let's see if levering the front off does us any good. Ugh. Ah, there we are. So this one screws in under the front cover. It's quite an array of LEDs we've got on the front there for power, turbo and HDD. Two lights for each by the look of it. I guess you get a nice, nice glow along the front there. That's, that's quite cool. Mm -hmm. right, let's put these in the bottom row for computer two. So naturally we will get these components up on a test bench and see what's going on with them. Uh, I'll probably do that before cleaning just so we know what parts are actually worth cleaning. Depending on the state of inside of this one and how long it takes me to get all the bits out, we may have time to do that in this video. Okay, that's one panel. Nothing scuttled out. Actually looks a bit cleaner than the other one, I guess. This is a bit more airtight, less wildlife. There we are, that's that panel too. There we are. Okay, so. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this machine's a little bit less interesting, slightly more modern hardware in here. Let's get that, where's that cloth? Let's get that, just rid ourselves of some of these cobwebs before we stick our hands in. Now this has a much more awkward design than the other one. To bring the power supply out. Like camera malfunction there apologies if the angle has changed somewhat and that's freaking you out i tried to get it back to how it was uh, but anyway we were in the process of taking off this power supply which i would be able to continue doing if i hadn't have lost my screwdriver Aha. Mm -mm -mm. so once this power supply is out of the way we can get a proper look in here and see what's going on. Oh, apologies for the sniffling, but this 20 year old dust or however old it would be in here is setting off my allergies a little bit. Not to mention summer. Yay for allergies and asthma. PSU, out of the way. Excuse me while I blow my nose. <laughs> right ho. machine. So see, we have a much less interesting array of hardware, including a 
some kind of German ram by the look of it. NCP means nothing to me. We'll put that to one side. Have a look at that. So this is the modem, I believe. Yes, this is the modem, a much less impressive looking modem than the one that came out of the previous machine. So that's in the, I think they're called like eye supports, ISAs, these things, if I remember correctly. Just an older, bigger standard of card. Obviously this scanner card with all its jumpers went in the ICA, whatever it's called, ISA, 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 yes, ISA bus. Um, and you've got your jumper configuration on here for however that scanner needs to be configured. Interesting little card, probably gonna be completely useless to me, but it looks nice, it looks real pretty. It's a nice PCB. Com port out. So that's connected into UART2? I don't know. I don't know what that port is. I mean, some sort of com port. As I say, a little too old for me. Finally, let's see if we can figure out what this CPU is. However one does that. Doobie-doo, dabby-dee. Oh, that was easy. Wow. There's a CPU with no thermal interface material on it at all. No wonder this thing wouldn't power on. It must have fried. I mean, I'm right, yeah, you still needed thermal paste back in the day. There's no way that you just put this chip straight onto a heatsink, right? Let me know in the comments if that was common practice, but. So we have here oh, an AMD K6. That's cool, that's a chip I've heard of. Don't really know anything about it. As I say, I'm pretty confident it shouldn't have direct contact to a heat sink with absolutely no thermal compound on it. Might be wrong on that. What is cool about this though is because it has had no thermal compound on it. It's really pretty, <laughs> it's really new. So the pin's still beautifully golden. This has clearly just gone in there and never been taken out again. Wonderful. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's going to be a better chip than the other one. Um, certainly it'll be an interesting CPU to have a play with at some point. Let's get this motherboard out. This motherboard looks a bit more like I would expect it to, like a, a mini ATX or something like that. Again, I'm not super familiar with the dimensions off the top of my head. But uh, through the power of editing, we'll be able to have a rundown of all the components we've salvaged here in which I can make myself look like a genius by actually researching them before I talk about them. Ooh, this is a wonky screw. Let's try the others. Mm -hmm. All these screws are quite wonky. Hopefully once I loosen them all, I'll just be able to pull the ball out. Nope, oh, one of them's come out. Okay. More camera hiccups there, but it gave me time to figure out how to get these screws out of the motherboard. They simply needed to be gently pulled up as they were coming out, as they were slightly stuck in. So that's something, you know, if you are ever trying to get screws out of an old motherboard, it might be worth just gently pulling up on the motherboard just a little bit, obviously not too much. You don't want to crack the thing. But it did just allow me to get these free. Saying that, 
Ah, there's another one here. Give me the problems now. There we are. Motherboard free. So I don't think there's anything particularly special about this motherboard. SIS, fairly standard. I've got a couple like it. Socket 7. I think the ones I've got are slightly more modern. Uh, same chipset manufacturer, but yeah. So that's all the components removed from this case. Again, CD drives, floppy drives, etc. They're all going to be tested later. What I did notice about this, and what is quite nice, is that this back plate here is actually built into the case itself. Um, which obviously would make upgrading it a bit of a chore, although I assume this would fit a normal backplate if it had to. Oh man, the CD drives in the front are heavy. Oh. Okay, so that's it. That's the teardown of these two old computers complete. We are left with two motherboards, a rather nice 3D Creative Labs blaster sound card as well as, of course, a sound blaster as well. They did like blasting things back in the day. We have our rather confused Pentium 2. Oh wait, it doesn't even say AMD. It says Arvid, wow, wow. I bet you were all screaming at me when I was doing that. Apologies, I totally read that as AMD. <laughs> so we have our not at all weird Pentium 2 CPU. I'm not even dyslexic or anything, I can't, I can't excuse that. I do apologize. We have various sticks of RAM and this absolutely pristine AMD K6. That I'm the most pleased with. If it is indeed the case that this did need thermal compound and didn't have any, I am very pleased that whoever did it didn't put thermal compound on it because after all those years, thermal compound stains the metal, makes things look all gunky, whereas this is basically factory fresh. Lovely. And of course we have our COM port and uh, this ISA bus scanner card. Yeah, that's a pretty good haul. Let's um, do a bit of research and figure out what we're actually dealing with here and whether or not any of it is actually any good and will be deemed worthy of my Windows 98 gaming machine. Back over to me on the computer. Okay, so what past me failed to take into account there was that we were already at 30 minutes in this video uh, or thereabouts, so we probably won't have time this week to look at all the hardware in depth, but next week we will uh, be testing the hardware, making sure it works, and I will make sure I get educated so that we can do a deep dive into what we actually found today. So if you liked the video, please click the like button, and of course subscribe to the channel for more. Stay tuned for further episodes of this particular series as well as some other new series coming soon. Um, if you have anything you want to say, if you want to give me any advice or say what you like about the videos, say what you don't like, let me know something about some of the hardware we're looking at, then drop a comment in the comments below. And if you don't like these videos, well, there's a button for that too. So if you've got to push it, then you can push that. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming. Be well.